Welcome back. This is the final lecture of the semester, and we're going to finish up language acquisition by talking about some of the sound developments and some other common aspects of first language acquisition. So to give a quick recap of what we've talked about with the stages so far, um, we begin acquiring prosody and things like that in the womb. So we're already starting to acquire some aspects of language even before we're born. And then in the first six months or so, we start to establish joint attention, so we're being able to follow eye gaze. We start with some of those social behaviors, things like smiling and laughing. Things like proto-conversations can often help with this as well, and this is when we first start seeing those develop. And then we will start to see things like babbling happen around the same time, so still within the first year, and beginning to start to segment the speech stream into words and produce first words where there's a first form and meaning pair, where there's a recognition between the sound that are being produced and the meaning that's associated with that. And then shortly after that, once words are starting to be able to form with the form and meaning pairs, you start learning the first several dozen words during that one word stage where you're first starting to just say one word at a time. Um, very quickly, once you started to acquire some of those very first words, is when that vocabulary burst will start. So starting around a year and a half or so and continuing through the rest of the stages, children will learn about five to ten new words every day during this vocabulary burst. And overlapping with this are different stages, including the word and gesture stage, where you're starting to move into gaining some concepts of syntax by saying a word and maybe pointing to something before you have all of the words to really move into the two word stage and begin combining words together um, verbally. And then from there you start undergoing the telegraphic stage, a long-running stage, where you're slowly starting to acquire a more adult-like capacity. You're starting to use different morphology aspects, you're starting to use more complex syntax, until you gain about adult-like capacity with morphology rules, with syntax being able to put things into full sentences that are using function words, that are using morphology more correctly. So today we'll look at some of the phonological development, some of the sound uh, changes that happen during the same time as these other grammatical stages will take place. So when we're looking at phonological development, these are things that are also happening within those first five years. And there's several aspects that are starting to happen at this time. So babbling, which we've already talked a little bit about, is also a phonological aspect of development. And we'll see that as things are developed and before things are mastered, that we also see some other common processes, things like cluster reduction, substitution of one sound for another, um, and we'll look at some of those examples as well. So if we start with babbling, we saw some examples of this in the previous lecture, and babies start to begin to babble around six months or so, and they're starting to produce at first just a string of a single repeated syllable. Most of the time, this is just consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, and the vowel usually starts off as a low central or back vowel, something like an ah sound. And you'll typically have the consonant be a nasal or maybe a voiced oral stop at first. So the first kinds of things you'll hear are ba, 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 ga, 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 ma, 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 ma. Um, and this is part of why mama is such a common first word across languages, because these tend to be sounds that we practice first when we're first starting to test out the motor control, first starting to test out sounds. You'll start to then see some varying syllables, um, some different intonational contours where you have different vowels that are starting to be introduced. You have different uh, consonants that are introduced at the same time where you're using more than one in a single string of sounds. And then you'll start to see over time using other consonants consonants using other vowels, adding in things like voiceless stops and fricatives first, and eventually some of those other sounds after that. So you start getting things like fa, fa, tu, tu, so, so, where you have a mix of consonants and a mix of vowels that are all put together in these different kinds of babbling strings before we get into actual word development. So if we go back to that uh, first video that's in the accompanying video, you can go back and watch that um, and listen this time specifically for some of those sound features of babbling. So they're still mostly in the babbling stage at this point. And you can hear when you're listening to their speech, a lot of repetition of that ah sound that is by far the most frequent vowel that you hear. There's not a lot of variation from things like da, so this is still relatively early in that babbling stage for them. But you do occasionally hear some other plosives. You can kind of hear what sounds like maybe an ah sound thrown in occasionally. So they're starting to test out some of those other sounds, some ga, some ah sounds in there, but still mostly relying on some of these earlier sounds that are more commonly found towards the beginning of these babbling stages. Babbling is something that will help lead into that first word stage. 
And a lot of times a toddler's first word will contain whatever consonants and vowels were most favored during babbling. These are their most well-practiced sounds, these are the ones that they've mastered the best, that they've practiced the most, that their motor control has more control over. And it'll be very common for them to continue to babble and test out sounds and sound combinations even after they've started producing their first words. So just because a baby has started making some words and actually connecting some of those doesn't mean that babbling just suddenly ends. It's still very common for them to babble and test out new sounds that they haven't mastered. And we often see this happen um, at bedtime as they're falling asleep. They might be practicing new sounds and sort of babbling themselves to sleep to continue practicing that different aspect of motor control. And different children are